guys. Oh my gosh, you're already chatting. You know how excited me and Andy are? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I want to welcome you all. Well, we, we want to welcome you all to the Macro Chat Live Show. This is a live photography chat show where we dive into close up, macro, and micro photography. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. And also, we feature amazing guests and chat about photography shooting equipment post-processing so you can get your work out you know and express yourself so you love what you do all right so i'm going to do this little intro and try to get it better because me and adir we've already talked about how we want to do this it's a, definitely a live show and we do not cut it so if some of you guys do not know who we are I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, where we help you love your macro and landscape photographs so you can monetize with confidence. And then, is it this way? Oh, over here. And this is AD. He is my co-host, producer, and one of my amazing photography mentors. And he is from he his website, check him out at explorographer.com, which we have our little goodies down below. So today, is the, this show is all about the image feedback loop where you submit images and we give you some tips and tricks and also give you some homework to push you out of your comfort zone. That's the loop part. And then also I want you guys to think about it because it is a new year and I would like to dive into some of your photo goals. So think about those and we'll put them in the chat and we'll talk about it. So it is a chat show where me and AD will be talking with you guys, looking at the chat, asking you questions. And of course, um, if you can't make it live because sometimes people can't, then use the comment section as the chat. I get pinged every single time. And if there's a question for AD, I could give it to him. So ready, get set, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> there we go. Good job, Janice, good job. <laughs> Hi everybody, mouthful. it's uh, the first feedback <laughs> loop of 2021. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can you believe it? It's a brand new day, it? brand new year, brand new everything. And so, yeah, so you know what AD, when we, play this one for 2021 mm -hmm. and I'm going to go through that shabil every single time <laughs> for people that don't know us. Let's see how good I am to the end of the year. All Boy, right, yeah, that was, we'll, uh, we'll grade you at the end of the year. Let's <laughs> see how it goes. Let's give some shout outs. So, oh my gosh, I get so excited when you guys chat up. Elise is here. Debbie's here. Uh, we have Catherine here. Baz is here. Paul, you're here. Woohoo! From Canada. Yeah. All right. Nice to see you. Paul, you get to know all these people. Um, I see some see. new names JR. for sure. Yeah. Huh? I JR see some new here. names in there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So when you guys are new, come over and say hi and chat with us. This is what it's all about. We've got some amazing photographs. I'm super excited. Super, super excited. Where do these photographs come from, Janice? Oh, okay. This is what we got to do. So basically what you do is you go down, look, see what AD has done down below, down below, down below. What you got to do is really submit your work. These, we do not, you'll see today, stay for the show because what we do is really just help you push out of your comfort zone. We don't eat you up and spit you out at all. This is not college. It's all about <laughs> fun and being creative. So what you do is you go down there to the, the link and we have the link actually down below also once the show's over and you could submit up to three images. So what we do is we ask you why basically did you push that shutter speed and then me and AD can get a feel for it because it's kind of like dumb for us to say how we like about it if we don't really know what you're trying to get out of it. And then what's really cool, I think, is that we offer you to put in a portfolio. You could put up to 10 images. And what we do is we give you feedback on the whole portfolio as a instead of individual images. So definitely check that out because this is what really makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, I think right, there's a, guys? we're going to talk right today. Um, I think a, one of the submitters actually asked the question about um, what do you mean by why um, why to take the photo, right? So we're going to explain to you the best that we know how as to what we're looking for from you when you submit your images. So this in this show, the first one of 2021, that's a feedback loop, will help you guys like submit your photos. And I just want to reiterate what Janice says. We're not yes. taking the photos and tearing them down or tearing you down in front of 
a bunch of people. What we're basically trying to do is figure out what you're looking to achieve with your photography and trying to give you some, um, some hints, some boosts, some creative, I don't know, stuff to make, uh, to make that <laughs> stuff happen for you. So that's what yeah. we're basically trying to achieve here. It's not a, uh, let's just find some, cause we, Janice and I could find photos on the internet and critique them all day long. I mean, there's, you know, we could just get anybody's photos and do that. But what we're yeah. really trying to do here is focus on you and not, um, this isn't a critique of what level your work is at or, um, you know, any of that kind of thing, unless that's what you ask us. If you, uh, you know, if you ask us a specific question, when you submit your photos, we'll try to address that. But the main thing for us is that we're just trying to help you get over the creative roadblocks that will help you expand and grow as an artist. And, um, creativity is king on that list. While we might talk about technical stuff, which I tend to do a lot to, and, Janice will shut me up on, <laughs> when I get talking too much about it. Um, we really try to um, push towards your creativity and have fun with it. Um, and uh, I just started a new project, Janice. I don't know if you're aware, if you've seen Twitter, yeah. but I'm actually doing a really crazy project with my photography and AI um, crossbreeding of photos um, and turning them into impressionistic um, images and I'm, I've got a whole oh. series of them that I'm working on and I was inspired by Trey Ratcliffe and his uh, exploration into the world of fractal video art which he is doing now a lot of on his channel oh. and I just um, every once in a mm -hmm. while photography needs to be integrated into something else and you need to grow a little bit now I'm gonna I have a new mm -hmm. photography project project that's coming up that's just raw photography but this is gonna help me kind of um, get those creative juices flowing so if you get um, awesome. Yeah, if you get uh, stuck, always don't be afraid to try something wacky and weird and have fun with it. And you'll be surprised how much it helps your creativity in other areas as well. So that's what we're going to yeah. focus on. So. Yeah, it gets your adrenaline going. It gives you that that high. So you don't need any drugs. Just come to the Macro Channel <laughs> right. show. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Too funny. Okay, you know what I also want to say, you guys? Oh, I want to say hi to Skeeter. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that uh, we have, this show is every other Thursday. I, produ I produce, I put out. Uh... Oh, Janice froze. Well, guys, just me now. But uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get Janice back on the call. Oh, all right. So she's she's working on it. Hold on, folks. Don't go anywhere. Oh, Janice. Oh, oh. remember. But anyways, oh. I looked them up. Oh, I'm off. Are you still there? Am I off? You. Oh yeah. Oh no! <laughs> what Jan. happened? Am I there? Am I here? <laughs> You're here now. You've made it back. Well, that was so weird because my computer's doing fine. Um, <laughs> well, it what I, I have to still move things over, but am I okay? Am yep, I okay? you are or... fine right this minute. But you did uh, completely freeze up. We had no audio. We had no anything. That is so weird. Yes. Yeah, I I did have com problems with my computer. But uh, I, I just need to move some things over because remember <laughs> I had some problems with my Wacom. All right, well, so, we're yes, going to add I'm two sorry. minutes to the timer. We've still got, we'll add two oh minutes to God. the end of the timer that you were, yeah. uh, oh they were out of there. Okay. So you were saying about every other Thursday. That's where we were Yes, at. and we're having, okay, so we're having Ben Tuxworth. He's from Adaptalux. Yes. And so he, I found him on YouTube and I'll put down the video down below. So mark your calendars, February 4th, Thursday, Ben Tuxworth from Adaptalux. He's really, really creative with those lights. So mm. are we going to get rolling? Let's see, what is, <laughs> what is, what is Debbie saying? One of my goals this year is to submit portfolio of images for the show. Oh, that Yay, would be wonderful. Debbie. Oh, let's see. Skater, my goal this year was to do more on purpose shoots we could yes. we could talk a whole show a whole show skeeter on that we could do a whole mm -hmm. show trust me mm -hmm. um if i gave you one piece of advice on on purpose shoots is don't rely on them be adaptive because let me tell you <laughs> i've planned what is an on 
on purpose shoot. Well, I don't understand what so, that is. Well, so let's take, for instance, I do these photo shoots where I take six or eight photographers and we, we go to a place and we, we set up an itinerary and we shoot, right? It never fails, Janice, that something along the way will not actually work out. Like something, and you have to adapt like on the fly. So it's nice to have a plan, but it's also... Um, Sure, shooting something will try to get in your way when you make a plan to do a photo shoot. It'll be the weather. It'll be a car oh, yeah. car breakdown. Something a camera. You'll forget your battery. Something will happen. <laughs> something <laughs> always <laughs> happens. All I can say <laughs> is just keep pushing through because I've been, I've had like weather forecasts tell me it's going to be horrible and everything, and I've driven in driving rain, and then I got there, and the place has been it's beautiful. And, and mm-hmm. if I would have just, if I would have said, oh, it's raining, we're not going to go, we'll have to reschedule. Yeah, definitely Skeeter. Um, on purpose shoots are great, but always be have a backup or plan or three <laughs> in, in the background. I usually just tell people just to work on adaptability um, and don't ever say no to a shoot because that would be the one magic moment that gets away from you. So um, yeah. it's good to have the plans for sure. But don't let don't be discouraged when something pops up and says no you shouldn't do that just do it well <laughs> i must be like i must be like him then because i'm always on purpose but it always changes <laughs> yeah know what I mean? yeah i mean you know then you know very well what i'm talking about that how oh, yeah. no matter what I, happens yeah it, it always always yeah. seems to pop up and bite yeah. you yeah Yep. Sounds cool. Let's see. Awesome. Lisa's goal says my goal is to concentrate on one on one more macro subject this year. Do the best I can to improve on it. That is Great perfect. Plan. The power of one. Yep. Have you ever read that book, you guys? The power of one. It basically is a business book because I love business. And basically it's it's so true. If you focus on the power of one thing you will get it yep. you will achieve it and you got to do it and that's one of the things that i love about our adventures of the f-stop um because that's what it's about is the squirrel system that you're all over the place <laughs> and you know it's just like you got to focus and that's what i loved when you were mentoring me um ad because you like gave me a project and i did it right. and i was like on it and that's yeah. what i that's what i built into the membership program and i think it's it was, amazing what you people will find out if they take those one projects that first one may take you a long time to complete and it may seem like you're never going to finish it but once you do finish it, the next prop, the next project that you take on will go even quicker. And sooner or later, you're going to be back to speed and things are just going to seem like they're flying in multiples at you uh, and you're getting multiple projects done and you're going in multiple directions. But you're not really. Um, you're just becoming more efficient at the way that you do things. And, and exactly. It, and yeah, but you got to take those baby steps first. Um, it's kind of built into our genes right that we we will have to walk before we can run a lot of people try to run immediately once they figure out how to walk and they fall on their face a lot and that mm-hmm. can be discouraging it can turn a lot of people away um so some of us are really stupid like me and <laughs> I, I i ran i continually run into the wall and um and then i i go oh that's a wall and and, and then i go in the other direction and run into the other wall and i go oh that's a wall and i just keep doing it until I figure something out. So I'm, there are people who do it that way too. And I'm, I'm probably yeah. one of those folks that uh, I've just efficiently learned how to run into walls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. And, uh, well, get that you know done. what? Skeeter has a good question. Can we talk a little bit more about projects? Well, I love sure. projects. That is like, that is my main, that is what I live for. Cause in the beginning, uh, the, well, you know what, this is one of the things I wanted to talk because we, you know, in 2021, you know, sometimes you, I don't know about goal setting. Some people will don't get flustered. If you set a goal and it doesn't get completed, at least you charge it. That's, right. that's the whole thing. At least you go for it. And that's a scary word too, Janice. Goal is a scary word. We set that up. That seems like a high achievement. We've got to finish something. We've got to You know, Mm -hmm. we've got to make it some player. Sometimes what I think the way Skeeter is putting is really good. Projects is a really good way to put it because you can Mm -hmm. have multiple goals within a project that don't seem like you're at the finish line and they seem to be easier to accomplish for me at least. And that's like, I'm in a, I'm in a dry position right now with my photography. Um, Mm -hmm. I use my camera more as a webcam than I do to take photos and that's horrible right now. Um, and that's why I said to you earlier, I'm working on this new project and I have awesome. the infrared waterfall 
thing that I, I live in waterfall country and I'm like, you know, I've got to get back into this photography thing heavy again. And how do I do that? And I got an infrared camera and I'm going to try to take waterfall photos with an infrared camera, which I have not done before. And mm -hmm. that to me is not really a goal, right? That's just, I'm going to go out and take some photos right. and I'm going to see where it goes from there. And that though is a project. I want to build a portfolio of infrared waterfall photos. That's the long-term project. So I think it's really important yeah. that you lay something out, just lay something out and go for it. Um, if you're in a dry spell for sure. Yeah. So that you, you know, that's a good thing to think about. Like if you get scared, I'm not afraid of goals. I, I you know what I mean? Like yeah. I say myself goal, if I, I'm a, this is so perfect. That's why I love you and I both being on the show, yeah. because for me, if I say it's a project, it's not as strong enough for me to work on. Gotcha. Do you, you know what I mean? Yep, for me. Sure. So if I want to say, okay, my goal is to complete a portfolio, but it's not just to complete a portfolio, a complete a portfolio. And then yep. I want to, I don't do this anymore, but then I want to submit it to an art. Right. You know, there's this company that I really dig and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want them to see it. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, so then I'll focus on that and then I'll work at it and do my best to get it to them. And sometimes right. you say, okay, this, um, you know, this Apple app, maybe won't, you know, they, they, they don't like it, but that was my goal, but somebody else might grab it. So right. it's like a tree. I always right. say, you know, it's, sure. it's, it, I always, that's how I figure out my goals, but projects are awesome because like you're saying too, that to me is like a project, like what you're saying, you're going to what you're going to get yourself into. Yeah. I think it's just and, a different terminology because ultimately it? for me, um, a lot of times I set goals that are way too like not realistic. And then I get upset because I can't make yes. that, right? Mm -hmm. And and so for me, mm -hmm. I've had to break that down and call and start calling things a little bit less than a goal. And if I get to mm -hmm. the goal, then I'm, I'm, if I don't get to the goal, I'm going to sit back and say, why didn't I get there? Let's learn from this situation. Let's mm -hmm. learn from why we did it. But if I do get there, then great, we can call it a goal at that point. And I think that's important mm -hmm. that you and I both have two different views on that and how we handle mm -hmm. it. And that's probably goes to the roots of what we're doing here with other creatives. And this is what we talk about. We don't have a definitive answer for everybody. Right. Guys, when you submit your images or you want to talk about things, we don't have definitive answers for you. What we can do, though, is give you our experience and have you adapt that to uh, adapting again, adapt that to your situation. And then yes. hopefully that will move you um to your goals or your projects in, in that yes. uh, sort of effect. So that's basically what we're going for here. Yeah, no, that's cool. It's, um, you know, he was, uh, Skater was doing the stay home challenge. Oh, yeah. You know, it's so funny. I didn't realize this until I went to Shot Kit. Um, and uh, you know what? I, I, when it says I'm a, huh? well, we'll show you later. <laughs> I'll show you because I'm going to show you guys Shot Kit. Yes, I'm on Shot Kit. This, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead because I'm looking at the time. Yep. Let's go for it. Let me uh, get things rolling. And what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the images. And of course, you guys know we like to have a little break in between and then we go back into images. So we're going to start off with the segment now. All okay, right. so let's go into JR. He's here. He's Yay. here. I love it when you guys are here. I understand sometimes you guys can't be here. So here's his image called Symmetry. And he shot it off of an EOS 760D. And he used an ISO of 320 F8, 1 50th of a second, and used 200 millimeter image. And he, uh, 200 millimeter lens, duh. Mm -hmm. And then he edited in Luminar 4. So he calls it Symmetry. So obviously we're, we know what his his goal set this is what made him push the button gotcha. of of what you know oh so a lot of time i want you guys to know that i get them and ad he i think maybe ad from now on we'll just like surprise you because it'll be your first impression which is kind of cool don't you yeah think? i actually work <laughs> i work better if i don't sit and look at an image um you get more of an honest answer from me if i just see the image and give you my immediate thoughts Perfect. um out of out of the Love image it. so it Unless we'll we do have to do on. some editing, um, okay. which we, we really haven't had to go that direction. Um, we yeah. pretty much can talk our way through 
um, these images and give people ideas. And you, you're handy enough with the editor that you can just show, you know, if I have an idea or something, you can, mm -hmm. you can display it. Mm -hmm. So I you think that works that. probably the best. Okay, cool. 2021, that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> For now, until something better comes For along. Now. Yeah, because we like to do change. Okay, go ahead. You tell me. I, I have some pointers. But sure. You well, I love the subject. I love the background. Um, the, the background does have a little bit of contrast going to it, um, which uh, anytime we use a bokeh background, we have to be very careful of any, anything in the background uh, distracting mm -hmm. um, from the foreground, uh, our star here of the show. Um, the image is called Symmetry, um, which I believe is it's... Okay, so Janice knows where I'm going with this because she knows me and symmetry. So we'll, 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 we'll be hardcore for a minute, but please take this just the way that I put it, and I'll tell you why I put it this way. So um, the image is not sym symmetrical. You either have symmetry or you don't. There's like symmetry is one of those things where, you know, it's symmetrical or it isn't. Um, and so this image, unfortunately, is not symmetrical. Now, you could make it symmetrical by doing a simple edit of cutting one side of it and flipping it over and pasting it on the other side. And then you'd have an interesting kind of artwork of this fiddle leaf fern that you've captured mm -hmm. here. I don't think that that's really necessary in this image, though, but I want to mention that because it's a creative point for you to play with some editing. And I think it's important that... Um, it, to get it right in camera is always important. And if we can get the perfect image and I would challenge anybody to get one of these guys perfectly symmetrical, I don't think it's even remotely possible. Um, but I've seen some actual amazing edits where people have mirrored the other side of the image. And Janice, I know you've played with like the water presets and, and all those kind of fun things. And I, yeah, so I my, <laughs> my suggestion here is, um, you sparked my suggestion with your title. And I just think that uh, a little creative editing to see what you could do is, is some symmetry, maybe cutting this into four quadrants and mirroring it and then flipping it and then attaching the, the bottom stem, you know, and making it upside down. So it's mirrored four ways would be a really like wild, cool, fully perfectly symmetrical kaleidoscope uh, style image. Um, you know, mm -hmm. like the tiny planets kind of thing going on right, right um but i so my suggestion here for the loop is wonderful image um i love i love the the colors and the idea behind it my uh loop part of it would be just for me now we're gonna hear from janice would be mm -hmm. to play with some editing a little bit and see what you could come up with as well it's a perfect image for that so yeah okay so that yeah so um the symmetry, so GR, when you're here, are you talking about the symmetry for the actual plant feeling like it's kind of symmetrical? Or are you wanting the actual symmetry period of the whole image? Um, so that's what I was kind of curious on there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly there's no symmetry, but right. it was a little closest to my intention. Okay, gotcha. so I have a feeling that JR, when he saw it, he's like, oh my God, look at how cool the way it's growing. It looks right. symmetrical. So, um, so your so goal intense, was, yeah, your goal was definitely met. So we don't want to, we don't yes. want to be like your goal wasn't met there for sure. Well, I feel like his goal was met, but I do believe that the background is pulling, pulling me away from, okay. So I, I, let me just show you. Okay. You can see my mouse. So yep. this is your main subject in here. And I love, I love it. I love it. It's so cool to see ferns. I think it's one of my favorites. So he even has water down in here. Oh, yeah. See? That's awesome. And it, yeah. So what I would probably do is just play it like the bottom for me looks fine, but what's happening for me, because this is your main star right here. What I would think to do is either lighten this area up over here or darken this area over here, because what hap what's happening is I'm going to your, your actual fern, which is so cool. And I love it, but the background is um, taking me away because our eyes go to the bright areas really a lot. Uh, first we'll, we'll ping and ping. So, if you want me to hone in what I personally do, this is like a vignette already on its mm -hmm. own. I probably would just tone this down a little bit. Yeah. And let's see if I could do this really quick. Let's while, do it. While Janice is doing that, um, just so you know as well, JR, um, 
contrast equals sharpness. I know that sounds weird, but um, when you actually sharpen a photo, you're actually changing micro contrast in the in the photo to make it look sharper. Um, and a lot of times, um, and, and granted, there are many different ways to sharpen. There's unsharp masks and all that kind of stuff. But the common way is to change a, a micro contrast in the image. And so anytime we have contrast in a background, it tends to bring focus. Now, it's still bokeh out, and, and believe me, it's not in focus, and that's perfect, but it it makes a person focus on that area. So you have to be careful with high contrast. We always talk about don't put something high contrast in a corner because it will draw people to the corner. Um, that's exactly the same thing. Here you have that, um, you have the beautiful image here, your star of the show, and then you have this a little bit of a light line going right behind it, um, and... Uh, that would be something that I would focus on blending out or um, maybe even using uh, a little bit of clone stamping. Um, just something to blend it into the background a little bit more so you don't have that contrast in there. And then you won't be drawn away like Janice is saying. And, and the, see, the vignette helps an awful lot. See see how, yeah, see what I'm saying? So here's the next. And, you know, it's just like kind of honing in now on his symmetry. Yep just by giving a little vignette. That's just my little. So what I would do for my loop is just kind of pay attention to the background. If you can't do anything, then I would play in post. That's just because I love the symmetry. So to me, it's just like, let me see it a little bit more. That's and all. I, and I, mean, I, think, I think, too, cool. another thing, too, is these close-up shots like this. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of cleanup work, too. I noticed that you have a little bit of a spider web there going across uh, a couple of the pieces. Right yeah, if somebody's going to print this out and put it on their wall, which we, that's what our goal is, I hope uh, even you or anybody does it, um, that's going to really stick out um, quite a bit. I mean, it may not on your screen watching it on YouTube, but then when you print it large, it's really going to stick out to you. Um, so unless that's an intended part of your image, um, which I, I believe when I look at your image, I believe that the fern itself is the star of the show. So I would remove... Personally, myself, I would remove like mm -hmm. any sort of distractions other than your star of the show. So that yeah. makes sense, I hope. Cool. All right, let's get to his other one, which is really cool. It looks like a bat. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <It's> moving <laughs> things over. Look at how fun this one is. That's awesome. I love this one, JR. Let's see. Okay, so let's go. This one is called, hold on, I have it here. Do, do, do. That was symmetry. Slide o fears. Slide o tears. Slide, Slide -o -tears. of tears. Yep. <laughs> yes, and he uses his Canon 760D. His ISO was 400 f 6.3 at 1 200th of a second, and he uses 200 millimeter with an extension tube. I love nice. this one. Doesn't it look like a bat? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's got a. It's definitely got a a face look to it. You can see um, yeah. in it. Yeah, for sure. So what does slide of tears mean? Slide of tears. Oh, I see what he's saying. It's a slide of tears. Okay, yep. sorry. Woohoo. <laughs> my head. Oh my gosh. Okay, do you want to go for it? Do you want me to? Or let's see what Well, I'm interested in um so one of the things that would suggest um JR is don't be careful of relying too much on titles of images. Um, it's okay to title your images. That's fine. Um, I did it for a, a long, long time. In fact, I still do on a few of my images. But I started to rely on the text of my image to help people get it. And that's one of the things as an artist, as you grow as an artist, um, and you start being more bold with your images. Um, and I feel that this is a bold image. I don't think that this image personally needs a title. Um, and it's fine if that's your artist's statement of a title, and you're more than in, entitled to have that, um, and it's perfectly all right. But I always tell people, just be careful of relying on um, any explanation of your image. We want our images to stand on their own and mean something to the viewer. Um, we know secretly uh, what they mean to us. And a lot of times, that sort of secrecy can develop... a uh, a relationship between you and the viewer um, that is goes unsaid, which I think is really important um, in art today. Um, so having a name for it is fine, um, but also be careful of relying on it because immediately when I looked at it, I did not think of what you had put in there for the title. I felt like Jan like Janice. I looked at it and I saw like a creature almost 
Um, and so uh, I really have that, you know, that uh, sort of thing in mind um, when I when I when I saw it. Um, and we have some suggestions. Um, JR, I think you're hit it right on the, the button. I'm sure Janice was probably going to talk about that. It does need a little bit of space down at the bottom. Um, you're correct in that. Um, and we'll talk about the background and stuff. But um, I think for, for this image, um, symmetry, again, was very close in this image. And I, I think you're on to something. I think, you, I think you're drawn to symmetry, my friend. I see this in <laughs> two of your images. Exactly so I think yeah. um, is the bigger picture of the yeah. loop, I would love to see more images for you exploring symmetry in nature. And that is yes. difficult. It's difficult. It's not an easy task, but I think. No, it's hard. Um, but yeah, I think from what I'm seeing, uh, I really, I really think that uh, I'd like to see more of this. Hey, Tony! Tony is <gasps> oh holy my cow! We haven't seen Tony in Tony. so long. You guys, True Vision is Tony. Hello. Happy to see you guys doing this. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's been so long. Miss you, buddy. Yeah, dude. Um, Good to see you here, yeah. man. Yeah. All right, let's go, let's go back to Jared's image here. I just was saying hello in the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me let me. Okay, so Jr. This I like. I was. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like uh, for sure, the symmetry. The two images that you've shared with us today is nature, and it has some kind of sym you know symmetry to it. Doesn't have to be perfect, nope. but it is something that you should definitely get into now with your sl okay so now ad i get what it, um you know ad saying but i do want to say though that if you're if you one thing that's good with us is if you want your image to feel a certain way and you're naming it because you want it to feel a certain way then i feel for sure let me and ad know about yeah. the name of it for sure um and you i, I was watching the chat as AD was chatting or, you know, giving you some suggestions and you already picked, which is really cool because you've already like critiqued yourself. <laughs> I saw you say, he it's said, perfect. um, the left side is, you know, getting him and then the, the, you know, giving yourself some, you know, the bottom leaving more. So uh, you've already said that I yep. was going to say the same thing about this is pulling my eyes away. If you want to play and add this is what I would do when I try to fix things. Say I take a shot and I'm like, you know what? I look at it later, just like JR did. And he was sitting here going through his goodies. So if you can't, if you want to make this black, then you can do that in post-processing and, you know, paint it all in. Or if you want to keep this, cause say you like it, then I would clone it or I would take Ooh. this position here and flip it over and put it on if you wanted to. I'm just can saying. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. JR, do you have Photoshop by any chance? Let us know. Let us know. Yeah, because you something. know what I would do is I would use the, um, is it the, what is the tool that allows you the liquify tool? I would oh, use yeah. the liquify tool and you could actually yes. bend that whole thing over. You know what? I would totally use a lever. Yeah, totally push this over like yep. that or yep. bring this one in. You could the liquefied look it up if you have Photoshop because that would be perfect. Um, so fun to play with. To <laughs> definitely, I, that's exactly a great idea. Like bring that baby in or push it yeah. up and, for symmetry too. You'll, if you're looking yeah. for symmetry and it's a little off, liquefy is your best friend. <laughs> yes, it is. Yep. It is. It's a wonderful thing. Yep. Okay, so let's go ahead. Is there anything bad? Okay, yeah, maybe crop some more. Yeah, you know when I started cropping though, see over here to the left, this is where I yeah. was like, oh yeah, so that's when um, AD said about using the filter, you know, the liquify filter. Yep. All right, let's get to the next one. We're going to do Baz. Oh my, I haven't showed you this Ooh. one. Wait till you see this one. Yummy. Oh, How dude. Cool is that? All right, Baz, new Baz. level, buddy. Baz is like yeah. rocking. He has some other ones, but I'll tell you this one. This is my favorite yeah, one. That is and, definitely cool. And if any of you guys 
See, this is what's so awesome. Please watch the show after if you, you like whatever, come in live because you will see how Baz has grown. This guy has worked so hard on his water drops. And do you remember when he first started bringing them into the show? And he was like doing it and doing it. Oh my gosh, has he rocked it or what? This is like my favorite one out of his his water drops. I'm so excited about your water drops. I'll tell yeah, you that this right is, now. This, is, this makes me very proud to see this image. It really does because... <laughs> It shows, Baz, this shows your growth as an artist mm -hmm. is now mm -hmm. just starting to. Um, Janice and I have had the great opportunity to work with a lot of students and to see, um, we can see that point when they start to flower, right, for the lack of a better term in what we, <laughs> what we partake in. Um, but it basically, yeah, when I see something like this and I see what you've done here, uh, the creativity here, the fun in the image. This is what I want to see more of from you. Stuff like this is definitely amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing. It's absolutely perfect. Now go write I me another hit song. <laughs> That's what they tell so you let's in tell you Nashville. Guys, I know. Huh? Yeah, no, it, that's always hard to do, right? <laughs> so let's see. So let's. this is what he said. He goes, I tried something different than just flowers. And he, you know, rocking it. He goes, the eye info. So yep. he says how it was done. The eye shot was, he goes, the eye shot was done using a tendril twig off a bush. He used a Nikon D7500 with this 105 millimeter macro lens. He used a Raynox 250 uh, lens, tripod, water, nothing added to the water and someone's eye. Well, he says a photo of it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I used the same camera setup for the other two. Um, I'm going to share. I only see one. So uh, let, let's see. I would like to know. Oh, you know what? He has a tech. We'll, we'll get it. He wants to know about the Android app. I'll ask him uh, we'll talk about that in the equipment segment. Oh, okay. But um, so, yeah, because I don't want to get off track on this beauty. So, yeah, I just, you know what? When I saw this, the background's beautiful. The eye's beautiful. The drops are beautiful. I mean, I just I just can't say enough how awesome this is. So if you want, the, he has one more. Let me just, I want to share this other one, okay? Okay. He's doing the same one. The I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just jump in, AD, and then you can jump in sure. because this is something. So let me show you, Baz. So you know your highlights here? For The highlights here work really nice. I love the way the highlights are. It feels really good, all these little highlights. So I wanted to say I totally love this, and it's so beautiful. The only thing I would do, the only thing I would do with this, because I love the curves, I love the face. He turned it upside down. So cool. I would play with the highlights a little bit because it looks like she's choking. <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was looked at it, I go, is she choking? You know what I mean? So I would probably tone that down. You could just tone it down right now. So you go ahead and talk. But I was just so excited to see his work that I was just like, wow, this is yeah. this is really, really cool I stuff. I think the comparison between the two, the other one has such impact uh, with the background color choices, the eye color choices. Um, the processing um, has is so impactful that it overrides this image quite a bit. There's um, there's the the little um, reflection of the ring in the top uh, uh, over her head in the main image. Um, oh which, yeah, I see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and the other mm -hmm. thing I don't know if you've ever talked about this, Janice, but the the rule of odds. So um, one of the things mm -hmm. um, is that you have four faces in here, which is Usually you would want to just go with the three main faces, and I would almost even clone the, the extra one out. Um, mm. And, and mm. you'll see when you do that um, how much more impactful the, the just the three faces would be. Um, and there's also a little spot just above her head on the lower uh, right one. There's a little dot there on your... Um, yeah, perfect. That's all you really need to do. Um, uh, is, it's a horrible because it's well it's, it's just a quick uh, edit you know, but you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, 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 um, yeah. but there's also a little dot there that needs to be cloned out so when you get this close and you're dealing with this kind of um if it's above the third head um i just want to do this one right yeah, here yeah and and so those are just little distractions like even just a, a quick fix like that makes it look more like her hair um and it's less distracting that was a, like a white spot right right above the, your main subject um, that you kind of want to tone down a little bit. So 
all those little things though um in it will make this image a little bit more impactful like your first one so i think your uh your challenge here may be to do a digital edit like janice is doing only you know sit down and take your time with it and and really work hard on it yeah don't do it really quick like but me. to compare uh, this with the other image and get this image to pop to the certain um or not pop because i don't want you to make it into a you know fluorescent uh looking uh you know nightmare um but keeping uh keeping in in mind what you're going for for mood with this shot are you going for like a spooky kind of mood or a fun kind of mood because when i think dolls i think kind of creepy that's just, <laughs> they just that's the two that they just go like dolls are creepy it's cute you're so funny you well, know some people are afraid of dolls you know why because of that movie okay so <laughs> it's not an afraid thing janice but okay, where i sorry. usually where i usually run into dolls are in insane asylums oh, yes, and yes, prisons <laughs> and broken down old homes and um, they usually fall out of a closet and, and, and jump at me, like with the least, yeah. So, oh my God, that's so I, funny. Mostly, it doesn't matter um, what I or Janice think about dolls, though. What matters is what you think <laughs> you're trying to achieve with uh, the image um, yourself. And then process your color and your image mood to match that feeling. That's where the power of your image comes out. So, um, you know, while we can go with, what the book says for contrasting colors and all this kind of stuff that works great. If you're just going for, you know, don't bother me with, with the background image, uh, mm -hmm. as a supporter. But if you're going for like a color grading or something here, like, you know, try an orange and teal color grading and see what happens and see how that, um, see how that affects the image mood that you have. For me, yeah, when I look at I the second, this one, cause I think cause of the grading, right. You know what I mean? And, but if you look at mm -hmm. the second image, um, it kind of all blends together with the background colors mm -hmm. and the foreground colors, which I understand mm -hmm. why, um, but mm -hmm. you can't, you do have certain levels of control over that. Uh, maybe go to a split toning with it or do something, you know, like that mm -hmm. where you can actually mm -hmm. control um, the tones. But I think that um, that would be my loop for you is to get creative with the second image and um, make it speak out more like your first image speaks out, not, mm -hmm. Not don't make it like your first image. Make it, yeah, make it uh, speak out like your first image does. Your first image has this bold presence that that says, "Yeah, check me out." You know, um, and the second image just doesn't jump at me like that. And it's not the subject. The subject's great, and mm -hmm. the way that shot is great. I think it's the coloring more for me. Um, so, in the, you know, the things that Janice pointed out with the with the uh, the extra things, but yeah. I think that's my loop for you as, as far as I go. I don't know if Janice has anything different. No, that's good. Cause I'd like to, cause the time is going cool. by and I want to get to <laughs> Debbie's too. Oh, we're um, worried about but, time. <laughs> yes, I am. I, it's, I cut it off at an hour, but you guys, so <laughs> that's just my thing. Um, so let me share with you guys here. We're going to go into equipment. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, hold on. I'm going to go to equipment because I want to talk about, okay. So first Baz, before we talk about that, Baz had a question on, and I don't have, I think you would know this, um, AD, let me see, sure. let me find his, he says, I would like to know if Android, if the Android app, if it will give me the EXIF metadata, including the aperture. Yes. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. what he wants to know. I don't. I have an iPhone, so I have no idea. So you're in your Android, um, you want to go into your camera settings, and you can. Most camera apps that you have will allow you to capture in DNG RAW, and though it will include all XF data with that, even the JPEGs um, right out of the camera, unless you have it turned off, which you can turn it off to, um, will also save XF location data, everything with the photo. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay, you guys. So we're going to do a little break and then we're going to dive into Debbie's um, image. And so I found this. I love ShotKit. He's awesome. If you guys have never been there, go to ShotKit.com. It's yeah, Mark so is much in, Mark fun. is an incredible dude. He's really yes. nice. Very, very nice. And so um, his, so he did this uh, cameras for macro, you know, photography. This is 2021, I believe. Yep. And so look at how cute that is. <laughs> the ant. <laughs> I love that. So I just wanted to share with you the latest 
because it's 2021. So let's just show you some. This is more of AD's fun gear stuff, which I do love my cameras and all that stuff. So don't get me wrong, but I'm just not as a techie uh, <laughs> person. But wow, 45 megapixels? Holy moly. Yeah, Nikon's getting there. Yeah. They're getting there. Wowza. And Sony's okay, about to drop see. their 120 megapixel camera on everybody. Shh. <laughs> So here's the, okay, so here's the 850. So this is the new one, I guess, or whatever, 40, 45.7 yeah. megapixels. Holy crap, that, I think that back in the days used to be, like, back in the days was like a medium format. Yeah. <laughs> back in the way back Well, yeah, days. you had to go Hasselblad in order to get to the 50 megapixel yes. mark. So, yes. yeah, it's. Yep, yep. But how cool is that, though? I mean, you can blow those macros up really big. Yep. Let's see. Do, do, do. It has a tilt angle touch screen. That's cool. They're stepping up, stepping up. You know, frame rates for macro photographers don't really care. I mean, we don't really care about the right. frame rate. That's yeah. for those other people. But it has 4K video. So if you guys want to do that with your macro, how fun is that? Put See, that blows, that. that blows me away, though, um, that Nikon is like 4K at 30, 30p. 30, like, that's how come completely. It's, not 60? Uh, it's almost, it, for most. I mean, it's fine for if you're only going to shoot like uh, straight up video that you're not going to slow down at all for any slow right. motion moves or anything like that. But yeah, most yeah. cameras today run 4K 60 so that you can slow them down right. um, because usually filmmakers want at least 24 frames per second. That's what most film is, is shot at. So with a 60 mm -hmm. frames per second shoot, you can slow it down and you don't have any loss of quality. So. It, but yeah. remember, this is not a it's not a video camera, so it's just exactly. video is just a secondary thing that they put in there for, so you can capture oh. some footage, you know. Holy moly, holy moly, sixty one. <laughs> that's that's nothing. That's I really? mean, the next camera that they have coming out, I believe, is one hundred and twenty megapixels. Oh my gosh, for Sony. Yeah. Wow. Yeah the the uh, uh, A seven R five. Is I'm be... really behind the times. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Well, like I'm behind the, whole... the times too because I only have an A7R2. So all of these people have these amazing, like that camera right there has um, pixel shift technology. It can actually shoot. This is um, very important Ooh, for, yes. for macro photographers, by the way. Um, yes. The pixel shift technology takes the RGB. It has three sensors in it. It'll shoot uh, a, a red sensor shot, a green sensor shot, and a blue sensor shot. And each one of those is slightly uh, moved by one pixel. And then it recombines those back together into a, a, an image that's 160 megabytes in size. Wow. So if you can imagine about what you could do with that when you, with your macro Beautiful. photography. And um, you know that I'm a Sony guy. but yes. And the only reason I talk about it now... The only reason I talk about it now is because I took years <laughs> of abuse being a Sony shooter. I, I've shot Sony since they were Minolta. So I oh, I loved Minolta back in the day, and, my and film I, days. And <laughs> I have a lot of alpha lenses, Minolta lenses, that actually the max lenses that work with the alpha uh, system, which I don't have anymore. I have one IR camera that's the alpha system. But I took so much abuse from Canon and Nikon <laughs> owners about being a sony shooter like what's that crap and blah 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 and all this stuff and well, i'll just let y'all know i didn't have any hate towards you guys during that time because i still <laughs> i still talk about in high regards nikon and canon i talk about them in high regards just like i do sony but i'm proud to see that sony is finally leading the market they just um yeah they did i good. noticed what about, it um uh, is this is a this is a mirrorless correct uh yes R. yeah Okay. Yep. And yep. they, um, uh, Fro, Jared uh, Poland just announced that uh, Sony is now the leader in uh, full frame cameras in the world. Well, good for them. So, I'm still a Canon user, though. And it's fine. I, you know what? Yep. So we talked about this the other day uh, in the guitar world. Um, it doesn't right. matter if what the name does. of the guitar is, uh, yes. it doesn't matter You're the so company right. that makes it. If it sounds good and it um, plays well, then doesn't matter what the name is that's on it right it, it it's it's ultimately down to the person using it so so uh, true i so think true. it's the same thing now with canon with lumix which is panasonic and mm -hmm. um 
Leica, Chris of course, and Hasselblad and, and Sony and Nikon and Canon. Mm -hmm. All of these companies are making good cameras. So yeah. get it, learn it, use it. You'll be fine. <laughs> I love I love this um, touchscreen stuff. I don't even think, I don't have a mirrorless. So See, I don't whatever. like touchscreens. I don't. Oh, you don't? No, See, because. I don't have one, so I don't know if it's, it sounds like it would be good. I mean, I don't have one, so how am I supposed to know? See, I shoot through the viewfinder a lot, so I'd be so touching the screen with my face and changing all my settings. <laughs> this one, this one is um, a Resolution 20 Luminex. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys. That's awesome. Here's a Rebel. Yep. So, you know, it's Available just like at Best all Buy. these new things. I mean, yeah. Yep. Have fun. It is really about, I just wanted to share this with you guys. And then real quick, I wanted to share, look, here I am. Yay. So I am a still life and macro photographer. I didn't realize it because I shoot a lot of my stuff indoors. So yep. really... I do, I am a still life macro photographer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it. Thank you. And I think I'm you can find me under landscape photographer somewhere. Yes, yes, very, you're in landscape. It's yes, all the are. old photos and all my old equipment too. I haven't updated in a while. Um, they did a yeah. story on my studio uh, recently. Um, oh, how fun! Shot kit did. Yeah. yeah, they they contacted and wanted to know like you know what what I had. Um, what I had done lately and they were doing a piece on people's studios and that kind of stuff. So they yeah, did a little bit. Yeah, they're so, so sweet. They're good so people. sweet. Yeah. Nope. So this is, so if you guys want to get, this is why I wanted to, you know, I did a search on macro. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want some really cool creative tips and Oh, Tony's in here too. Yep. Tony's in here. Um, so he's in landscape too, I yep. think. So anyways, if you want to get ideas, though, here's the macro. Just go do macro because it is a macro show. And if you want to see other types of photography, he has everything. So just enjoy it. You could do a little, you know, here's the photographers and you can do a search of whatever you like. And he's really good. So I, I would highly recommend you registering for his email list. He gives you a lot of great information. Yeah, and they always okay, have this... new stories and stuff uh, going up on yes. equipment and guides and all sorts of things. So definitely. Oops, sorry. Sorry. I, I <laughs> clicked it real quick. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was going to do that. Um, yeah. So anyways, okay. you guys saw Shock It. We'll put, the, we'll put the links down below. So let's go to Debbie real quick because I want to finish Debbie's um, – Baz, you had another image. We're going to go to Debbie's, though. I want to get into Debbie. So she says, hi, Janice. And this is why I really wanted to get to her image. Yes. She says, what do you mean <laughs> uh, my goal on each image? She says, I can tell my goal is, is learn as much as I can, and I want to move forward with my photography. I would like a little help how I can improve. I believe... Um, a photograph is in your mind before you press the shutter button. And she says, here I want to express with the white tulip. Um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Let me make sure. I'm here I want to express with the white tulip. Hold on when things fall apart. And then we'll talk about the Delilah. Okay. Uh, she says, the more knowledge and the push in the right direction gives you the confidence to, Im to improve and the quality to your pictures, kind regards. So yes, and I wanted, I really wanted to, I think this is perfect to end the show with because I think a lot of photographers don't have confidence in their work. But I have to tell you, all the photographers stepped up to the plate today and put mm -hmm. their images out on the show. That's huge. Yep. Yep. And it's it can really hurt when somebody says something about your work because we're so involved with it but just remember that me and ad are here not to hurt you right but to just help you get, take the loop and do some homework yeah no so, don't ever let anyone and i mean anyone whether they be a mentor whether they be a person off the street get between you and your subject that's a bond that it doesn't matter uh when it comes down to it what what matters is that you're happy and what you're mm -hmm. doing is is you're pleased with we feel that you come to us because you'd like to improve. And I think she said that. to go to the next, yes, And to does. go to the next she level. Does. So that's yes. basically our goal as well. Um, yes. You know, I have no skin in the game as, as far as talking to you about your photo, other than I do actually give a crap about you being as <laughs> creative as possible. And Yeah, because um, that's what we want. We, we want that for yeah, you guys. And being it's happy our, with your work. It's our drive. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's in our insides. Um, 
our genius zone, I guess, that a lot of people I've been reading up <laughs> on the genius zone. Well, I read I it. read um, through her uh, her thing here. Okay. And she talks a little bit about the Dahlia, which we're going to show in a second. Yes. Yes. Um, so let's talk about this one real quick and then we'll end the show with the Dahlia. Yeah. Um, so let me just trying to see what's going to express with the white tulip um, to hold on to things um, when they fall apart. So for me, um, okay, and this is just the part of the story. Um, photos need to have their own narrative, which is very important. When I looked at this image, I didn't have that feeling at all. I read this post after. I looked at the image um, because um, I didn't immediately put together in my mind that, you know, tulips tend to be out there when no other flowers out there, right? They tend to pop up early in the spring. Isn't that right? Am I mm -hmm. right about that? And, and so they, they push through. So when I think of a tulip, I think of perseverance. I think of, you know, like, um, so maybe we're just not connecting on our words there. A little bit between her and I, and that's that's fine. So if 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 that makes a connection, um, Debbie, with with what I'm saying, if if that's what you meant, um, please let me know because I'm I don't you know no, I'm not sure. A lot of times when I read other people's stuff, I'm not sure. I don't want to assume that they are thinking one thing when they're thinking something else. Um, I didn't make a connection of you know hold together when other things fall apart sort of thing um, with a tulip. That didn't happen for me. Um, so, um, um, I'm not okay. sure, you know, for me to connect the goal, I think, um, it's more, this is going to be more in Janice's department mm -hmm. as far as that goes. So I'm going to defer to her when it comes to that. For me, <laughs> on the technical side of it, um, for me, it, the only thing I will say about the image, I love the gray background. I love that it's soloed out on its own. Um, it is a tad bit over sharpened for me, um, in the, unless you're going for an embossed style look with it, which is also very cool if that's the idea that mm -hmm. you're going for. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about when we want to know why you press the shutter button, it isn't so much about your feelings. It isn't so much about the story. It is more about like, I guess, um, what made you stop and look at this tulip and then press the shutter button. Uh, and then you told us that that you had a story in your mind's eye, right? And that the, mm -hmm. that was that the white tulip holds up when other things fall apart. Now, after you've got that, and then now it's Janice and I's department to put that together, your words together with your image, and see if we can make that connection. So for me, I can't really make that connection. So that's why okay. I can give you well, a technical, but we'll... Janice, you tell us what the connection is there. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So you know, that's why we're so different. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So um, I get what she's saying. Okay. So um, it, it's, uh, this is a, a more of a fine art type of uh, statement. And so I believe this is what I could see. So she says, I want to express the hold on when things are falling apart. So, so. The I, I this is the her story within herself of when things are falling apart. So when a tulip is well, each of these petals are hanging in there, and this is hanging in here. Gotcha. So I, I get, and that's why she's emphasized it. You know, it's still there. It's like they're almost like holding, mm -hmm. and same with this one too. This gotcha. one's like holding. So. I believe that if you had a whole series of, uh, I, you know, to think of it on its own, it would be difficult. But if you had a whole series of flowers that were uh, basically, you know, just had one petal, two petals, this could be a really strong statement. Okay. So with her white tulips holding on and things falling apart, then you could have like the flowers as a as a variety of different flowers, how they live, and then they are holding as, as tough as possible to, you know, that's why the one petals, gotcha. the certain petals are there instead of all of, you know, them just falling apart. Right. So it's like the life of, oh my gosh, okay, I'm dying, but I just got to keep going. So I feel like this could be stronger 
um, with more pieces to the, that's why I love having single images, but right. I fully believe in portfolio. And well, so that's, that's where I'm coming with it. So I think that, my, my loop would be like, make more of these. There you go. You and know? the, I would like to talk too about the look of the image because it almost, the more I look at the image, the more it has a very um, Japanese line art kind of look mm -hmm. to it to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I really, I really kind of dig that. And I would like mm -hmm. to see her push that maybe a little, even a little bit harder. She might be onto something, but not pushing mm -hmm. it um, enough to really get that sort of line art look out of it. So um, if she is mm -hmm. going for a fine art look, that is definitely something I would experiment with and see, um, and maybe go with a lighter background. And so that mm -hmm. it more looks like um, not paper, but, you know, uh, maybe a pastel background. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Janice, like mm -hmm. a, a pastel burst mm -hmm. behind it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and yeah, I, I think she's definitely onto something here. And I'd like to see, yeah. like you said, I think more images in this line would definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely tell help. the statement. Yep. Yeah. I don't even, she was here. I don't know if she's here anymore, but she was. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go to her next one. Yep. And this is the one that she says that she, um, the Delilah, she wants to express uh, that we can shine through a delicate times. So. Um, or Dahlia. Dahlia. I'm Dahlia. so bad. The That's Dahlia all right. I want to express, we can shine through delicate times. <laughs> I know someone named Delilah. So it's just... I feel like Janice, I always butcher flowers. That's, that's I don't fine. know. Okay. So yeah, go. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go for it? And... Well, I love the colors here. I think their choice of background colors is amazing for this flower. Um, and it, I, the, center of the flower kind of mimics that tone that's on the outer edges. And I really like that effect uh, on mm -hmm. the image. Um, you know how I am about yeah, centered, no, about centered images. Um, <laughs> and, it, and that for me is, is I don't think that the composition lends to her story. Um, but I do think that the photo is well taken in the colors uh, choices, the toning and whatnot. Again, pink is a, a, a notoriously difficult color to not you know to not over saturate and end up um but i think that something uh with the composition kind of needs to um to mm -hmm. happen there um i'm trying to think so it can shine through delicate times so that's what i was kind of yeah. i was wondering what she meant by that yep. because I, I I did have with the other one I could understand more, but this one I was wondering about that. Well, it does um, look like it... it's bursting. Um, so, oh, maybe that's what. Yeah, okay, dahlias okay, have that okay. look that look like they look like f little fireworks. That's what I always think of them when I see them. I think they're just like bursting, like they're jetting out all over the place. And um, yes, beautiful. So I'm I'm wondering if uh, Janice, I notice you're cropping in that direction. I'm wondering if you crop the op a complete opposite and make the negative space where the flower is looking towards more of the negative space and oh, do it the other way in the lower left hand corner so that it looks like it's kind of like bursting bursting out a little bit more oh, i think that's a great idea because she wants it to burst yeah i like that shine it, through delicate times right. express she if you want to express something that's kind of like bursting i like that idea so AB, the other is cool. and the other option i think too is a little bit more uh, Debbie on the background needs to be a little softer. I think if you're saying delicate times, there's a little bit of contrast yes. in that V up there and the little other yeah. part. Um, mm -hmm. Contrast equals harshness, right? I mean, that's that's basically mm -hmm. what we think of. So if you want to say mm -hmm. delicate, um, I think that mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit more soft in the background. Other than that, though, um, yeah, um, Paul, yeah. I agree. The transition at the stem is a little distracting. Um, it is because there's a little bit of a leaf coming out there on the side. I think that probably could go that little this dark one? part. Yeah, that could go. And then at the bottom of the stem, there's a little bit of the leaf showing down there yeah, too. That. that could be, um, that could probably be, um, you know, so it's just a straight stem there and not, uh, well, doesn't look like it's it. bent off to a, a right angle a little bit. So I agree with both of those points. Good, good idea, uh, Paul. Good eye. Um, yeah, All I, right. yeah, I think this that, is cool that she's definitely on to something with both of these expression of, um, the marriage of human expression with flowers. So, 
um, there is a definite connection there. And that mm-hmm. may be something that mm-hmm. we want to see uh, uh, more. Maybe she can submit, maybe if she gets enough images together, that portfolio of 10 images that, mm-hmm. um, that, that marry the human expression to, um, to a flower like she's doing here. Cause yeah. I think this is a good yeah. path. Yeah, definitely. Like good it. Work. All right. Okay. Let's go back to us. This is a good show. It's ready. to. <laughs> we're ready to end it. You guys, if you like to give it a thumbs up, you guys, because that's what helps get us macro chat live people together so we can have some fun. I think this was a wonderful show and really um, AD and I have such a blast to help you and submit your images. So check out the link down below and submit them. You can see we didn't butcher. We didn't butcher. (laughs) (laughs) I can tend to be harsh at times. Janice is the other way. So we kind of try to keep a balance. Um, But I, you know, just so you know, um, I never mean to to hurt anybody's feelings. It's definitely um, I'm no, just kind of good. a realist and a and a cut and dry kind of dude. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so sometimes no, it comes off wrong. But I always have your yeah. interests uh, in mind rather than my own. Yes. So and that's what's so good because um, I think that it's good to have you know the cut and dry. Yeah. This is the way it is, and then the the that's what. And then I'm more of the fine artsy type of person. So you, that's why I say this show is awesome because you got both of us. <laughs> um, so I want to remind you though, to definitely, if you're new, subscribe to the channel so you can see more of this fun. And then also put on your calendar that uh, February 4th, Ben Tuxworth, awesome. He's from Adapt Deluxe and we're going to have some really cool lighting. This is macro lighting stuff, you guys. So with It'll that be an said, equi- equipment centric show, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And thanks you guys. I uh, mean, AD totally appreciate you guys hanging out with us for sure. Remember your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers. Bye guys. 